At Connecticut Orthopedics, your health and safety is our first priority. Our team is committed to ensuring the safety of our patients, our staff, and our community. We are open and we are ready to safely treat all of your orthopedic needs. There are five things that you could be at anything in life. Poor, average, good, great, elite. To be elite, you must be resilient. You can't back down from adversity. You can't back down when the odds are against you. It's the elite that transcend the game. It's the elite that are forever immortalized in our history books. This is the story of a group of young men that simply played the game they loved and walked off the field a team that we will remember forever. I remember the Sunday after the Yale Harvard game every year, picking up the you know the Boston Globe, and that was the front and center, you know, of these two teams. And you didn't know the didn't know the players, didn't know, but you knew it was a big a big time thing. Growing up um, within uh, with immigrant parents, all they knew was um, academics, right? So they knew. Uh, Harvard and, and Yale and Princeton and, and, and all of that. But what is really interesting, they knew about the game. The College Football 150 Showcase Game of the Week is the 136th meeting all time between the Crimson of Harvard and the Bulldogs of Yale. And we welcome you to the Yale Bowl for a series that started November of 1875. Great to be with Jack Ford and Ronnie Jones. Wester and welcome to our When you go into, uh, uh, you know, Harvard Stadium or you go into the bowl on the third Saturday of November, that adrenaline is going to be through the roof. It's way different. You might play in front of 6,000 people. Next thing you know, you're playing in front of 60,000. So it is a big deal, and you got to be able to transition through all that. This game stands above all of them. It really does. But when you come down to this game, it's... For, for my time here, one of us has been playing for a championship every year except for once. You're talking about arguably the two greatest institutions in the world um, that you know compete in everything they do, and, and one of those things is, is the game of football. And that's why you come here. You want to play in that game. You want to play in a meaningful game in November, and that's why you come to Yale to play in that game to win the championship on the last day of the season. So ready to go from the Yale Bowl. Lapel to the ball and the game underway. So I actually came into the game feeling pretty confident and cocky. And I'm not that type of person, but I was feeling pretty good. The blue leadership ball went great. And, you know, the, um, the presidential luncheon that we have before the game, that was terrific. Everyone was in high spirits. I talked to Coach Reno, said the guys are excited. They're ready. So I'm ready to just kick some ass, right? Um, and then it suddenly occurred to me that maybe we were getting an ass kicking. Back across and intercepted. Isaiah Wingfield. That is B.J. Watson in motion. And this is Watson. And Harvard has the lead. Rawlings, again the pocket collapse, ball pop loose, and the Crimson have it. David Schwartz, the fumble recovery. And the give is Borgay. Aiden Borgay will score, and Harvard, with 1.43 to go in the first half, has taken control of the game. We were very inconsistent in the first half on you know all three phases, in my opinion, and we had not played our best football. We were trying to do way too much. Our playmakers are trying to make plays on top of plays instead of just playing their normal Saturday. They knew that they had not played their best football, had not put their best foot forward on you know in all three phases, and it was much more of a, um, a feeling of resolve that, okay, now we're going to play our best football. We were good. We were ready to go, and then we go out for halftime, after halftime, and then we have to come back in. Students originally emerged from both sides of the state. When I say both sides, both the Yale and Harvard side, and a, uh, a protest of some sort 
and took a seat at the midfield area. When we came back on the field, we were running to our stretch lines and I wasn't paying enough attention, but I did feel a bigger mass of people that honestly I thought was just the band off to my left. And then I saw some of our guys were kind of, they were off and I looked over and there, there was the mass of protesters. Amory Guglieri, our, our deputy um, athletic director came up tunnel and, and she's incredible. And she says to me, she says, hey, there's a protest going on. Immediately my thought is, okay, this is Yale. I've been around quite some time, as we've talked about. Um, protests happen all the time. And she said, no, it's going on on the field. And I didn't really know what to think at that moment. As it started, both teams eventually went to their respective locker rooms here at the Yale Bowl. Well, when the team started off the field, that just brought more students onto the field. And here over the last uh, 20 minutes or so, uh, it has been students or protesters coming from every direction of the Yale Bowl. I got super focused, my staff got super focused, and we needed to figure out what, how much time are we allowed because we did know we didn't have lights. There was no room for failure. We were going to have this game. We were gonna finish it. And so we just needed to work diligently to get there. Speaking to a couple of the protesters, they said to me that they were here protesting climate issues, understanding, and these universities have always been at the forefront of the right to exercise your free speech, to protest issues. So certainly the authorities are trying to figure out how do we do this? make sure that we don't injure any of the people and yet allow this game to continue because once again you're talking about a game that's significant implications for the Ivy League so that's where we are attempting to move the, play, the protesters off of the field so the game could continue. The protest is what the protest was you know it was it happened and it benefited us I firmly believe that it benefited us it benefited our kids to calm down and there was a distraction and we need distraction. There's a point we were built, like there was a distraction and we welcomed the distraction and say, okay, here we go, let's get back on track. For us, was we were, we were resetting the game. Um, and I do think that was really helpful for us as we move forward, saying, okay, first half was the first half, we're resetting from this point forward. And the punt is fumbled, and let's see, did you know we're covering? They scramble for the ball around the 31, and it is pulled on football. So now Rawlings off the turnover by Harvard. Trying to strike. Slips it for Klumnik at the 15. And Reed Klumnik has first and goal at the four. Do that. Touchdown, Yale. Yeah. Borgay, who's had a huge day already, turns the corner again. And here goes Aiden Borgay. He's got another long run. And this one is 60 yards. Rawlings and the Bulldogs trying to answer here. Rawlings on the key. And Kurt Riley scores standing. That's Melvin Rouse. Inside here for Day. And for the first time today, no, he The clock's moving. You know, the clock is moving. You're getting a little nervous. And then we're down 14 with four minutes and 11 seconds to go on our own four yard line. As we're able to move the ball down the field, um, I think that, you know, we were able to start and gain momentum. Um, and as we gain momentum, you know, you could feel it in the sideline, you could feel it on the field. Here's Rollins again. out of the press box to see what's going to happen because it's such a unique, unbelievable situation. And the fact that it happened, unbelievable. And Reed made, you know, an incredible play and 
you know, Sammy had a, you couldn't execute any better than he did. Everybody's losing their minds except for Reed. Let's go, let's go play. Let's go win this game. Rollins, up in the pocket, the pump fake. And one in the boundary. Rawlings to the end zone, offline. Here's Rawlings in the gun on second and ten. He eludes the rush, now steps up in the pocket and fumbled the ball outside the five, and it is recovered by Yale with 22 seconds left and the last time out taken by Tony Reno. Why is that play happened? You I mean, you're looking at, you know, you're looking at Kirk going, you know, is he, is he going to get up? And, you know, as, as tough of a competitor as Kurt Rawlings is, you know, you, you knew he was getting up. And I'm like, okay, he's he knows what's going on right now. He's ready to go. What play do you want? Do you, and I always give these guys in these situations a couple of choices. This is what I'm thinking, A or B. Uh, I feel comfortable, comfortable with B. Okay, let's go with B. You know what you're doing. Here's your answers to what they're going to have. And he walked right out and bang. Takes the snap. Up in the pocket. Shoots it inside. It's caught. JP Selfie touchdown. Snap. Spot. Kick gets away. The ball game tied with 18 seconds left at 36. So after we scored the, the last touchdown regulation, you know, um, going for two never came to my mind because to me, I felt like we could win this game. You know, we, we, kick, a, we kick a PAT here, we get to overtime, we, we're, gonna, we're gonna win this game in overtime. So here is Smith off the 25. And Harvard going straight for the end zone and it's caught. Cody Crest, a touchdown. And just like that, the Crimson Strike. Here's Rawlings. Throws to the end zone and caught. Caden Herring, who just came in to replace Sophie. All we're doing is I'm watching the game and I'm watching the sun go down. The game, the sun, don't, you know, sun going down, sun going down, the game. There is some downtime in between everything, and you're kind of looking around, and you're like, "Yeah, it's getting dark. There's, there's, it, this is, we're getting close now." And I had that time in my mind. 4:36, the sun's gone. You know what's going to happen? So, so the game administrator actually makes the decision in this, and it looks like they're having that discussion. You see them right there just trying to decide whether or not they're going to continue this game. I don't see how you can. And, and for people at home, just imagine walking outside just after sunset. I'm telling you, it's right before the streetlights come on. Harvard has chosen to go on defense first. Yale has chosen to play at the scoreboard opposite, at the end opposite the scoreboard. So here we go to the second overtime. I, I honestly cannot believe we're going to play this. After the first overtime, the uh, referee came over, who was a great crew. Um, he came over to me and said, uh, you want to stay down this side of the field, right? And that side of the field was with the video board. And um, I said to him, I said, is this the last overtime? And he said, no, I think we can go one more. I said, good, and we're switching sides. And he said, why? And I said, because I want my student section. And um, our students give them, our students were phenomenal. I mean, all game, all day. You could just feel, in, in a stadium when you're on the sidelines, you can feel the noise of the crowd. You can just feel them all game. practice in much darker situations than that. I mean, there's, you know, to our, to our players, that wasn't, it wasn't dark out there. Hey, it's our home field. Let's go take advantage of it in front of our student body and make it as loud and obnoxious and dark as possible for them. Now Harvard's turn. Smith the snap, throws 
to the perimeter. And the tackle will be made by B.J. Watson. Smith goes to the gun, two to the boundary, three to the field. Now they motion the guy to the field. Throw here to the perimeter. This is Watson trying to get to the corner. He's tackled before the line to make. The ball game is over. Yale has won a share of the Ivy title. That just speaks for what that class was about. Hey, it's my turn, next man up, I'm here, I'm ready to go. Um, so I thought that was a fitting ending for that whole class. To, they battled, you know, they were part of some dismal times here, but they also won two championships and going out in that fashion was pretty special. We're very fortunate that, you know, coaches set the standard for the program where it attracts some of the elite kids in the country. So you know you have great kids, it's just a matter of watching them work and, and morph themselves into these great not just great football players, but great people. And, and to, to have a day like that for them to go out and know that they'll carry those memories for the rest of their life as much as we will, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty powerful. For any athletic director for Yale to experience and to watch that, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. And Tom told me that, and I said, I will do my best, you know, to carry on the tradition, but Yale does that in and of itself. Our student athletes, our coaches, they're first class. And so I'm just, I'm just happy that I get to be here. Being at a school like Yale, you're so fortunate to be around so much tradition and history. I mean, team 147th team to play football at Yale walked off that field last year. And you spend time with our, our incredible alumni talking about some of the great games in this rivalry. Um, and what you feel most fortunate about is that you were able to be a part of a game that's gonna go in that book of greats in this rivalry. 